Welcome to this James Bike Guy, where today we're getting a chance to take a look at the 2024 Trek Verve 2. Now, the Verve 2 is the middle bike in Trek's comfort hybrid lineup of bikes that are designed to be able to go for a nice ride around your neighborhood, bike path, or even on a great vacation. So in this video, we're going to take a look at this bike. We'll go over the features and designs of this bike and then talk about what to look forward for as things are coming in 2025. And to kick off this video, let's talk a bit about Verve. So Verve has been around uh, for quite some time and this is the fourth generation of the Verve frame. Now, I did my last video on this bike and, and it was the step over variant, meaning that it had the bar that comes straight across and I'll have that link just above and in the video description below. However, I figured for this video, we should take a look at the step through variant of the bike. And now by having a step through or what Trek calls their low step, it has this bar that comes straight down, small little cross bracing, a little bit thicker and chunkier down tube of the bike to make up for the strength that could be missing from not having that top bar and really negate the negatives of a traditional step through bike while also allowing the bike to be much easier to get on and off of, especially if you have a injury or a disability that makes it more difficult to swing your leg over the bike, you can just step right through. So super nice feature to have, as well as if you plan on using this bike, say for family use, maybe using it to commute on or take around, on the back, where you've got mounts here and up here to be able to put a rack across the back of the bike. Now you don't have to swing your leg over the rack to be able to get onto the bike. And that's something that I think has really changed, at least in my experience when talking with people, is prior these low step frames like this used to really only be thought of as being a women's bike. However, now they're way more popular than they used to be with men and women or just anyone choosing this as a more comfortable and easier way to get on the bike. But past that, all of the Verve series all feature a nice upright handlebar, a aluminum frame. This particular bike has an aluminum fork on the front end, and they all do feature disc brakes. And these disc brakes on the Verve 2 are hydraulic, clamping down on 160 millimeter rotors and help to give the bike a bit better braking performance and it also takes away the old issue of when you had a brake that clamped onto the rim if you hit a pothole or something knocked into it bike might need adjustment whereas with a hydraulic disc brake system a lot of that has gone away now speaking of where this bike is in the second level that's really where these hydraulic brakes come in because verve one has mechanical brakes which function well but don't quite brake as strongly and require a bit more adjustment. And on the Verve 3 version, you're gonna be getting some hydraulic disc brakes from Shimano that are really just another step above giving you greater modulation. What modulation is, is it's the distance between, you know, when you start pulling and when you get the full braking force. Ideally, you're looking for a brake that's gonna allow you to have lots of control throughout that lever throw. And that's something that you get as you get a little bit nicer in the different level of bikes. The other thing that really changes between Verve 1 and Verve 2, for instance, is in the front end. So this bike has an aluminum fork. So the fork is this piece holding the front wheel on. That helps lower some weight compared to steel, which on Verve 1, you get a steel fork rather than the aluminum. The other place that really changes between the two is on Verve 1. There is no adjustable stem, but this one, you can adjust the angle of the stem. So right now it's kind of neutral, but you could lower the front end down or raise it up to get more comfortable. And then on the cockpit, you've got an aluminum handlebar versus steel on that Verve 1. But on a Verve 3, you actually get a nicer set of grips. Uh, this particular grip does feel okay, but the Verve 3 is a little bit larger, a little more ergonomic and should add some additional comfort. Speaking of comfort, that's where we've got this beautiful boulevard seat from Trek. This saddle is mounted up on a suspension seat post. Again, that's a thing that comes in in Verve 2 and the Verve 3. 
get this suspension seat post. It can compress just a little bit. And then out back, we're getting a Shimano drivetrain. So this drivetrain operates two gears up front, which means that one less ring up front because they essentially average out the smallest ring and the largest ring of a triple to connect up into two speeds. So you get basically the same range, but a little less shifting, a little less fussiness. And then out back is the Shimano Altus rear derailleur that's running through an eight-speed drivetrain. So Verve 1, you're talking triple up front with seven out back, much more shifting, not quite as crisp. Verve 2, you've got this 2 by 8 And Verve 3, you have a 2 by 9 speed system. Now that brings me to talking about what's coming in 2025. Part of why I wanted to bring this bike up is because this has been a real hot seller for Trek and definitely rides super nice. And they've gone ahead and released the new Gen 5 version, which we'll see a little bit later this year and certainly all of 2025. And part of what changed is the frame has gotten just a little bit stronger, a little bit chunkier as far as the frame's concerned. But really, the major difference is in the drivetrain. On the Gen 5 version, go to a single ring up front and a slightly wider range out back. Now, personally, I'm a huge fan of less shifting up front. A high-low in this two-speed system is pretty nice, and then having that range out back. But one thing that's going to be interesting to look at in the future is that Gen 5 version is going to do away with having a shifter on the left-hand side. It's going to come in with a more limited gear range than what we have here, certainly oriented towards the more climbing side of things, a little bit easier gear, but you'll lose a bit of speed over what you had in the Gen 4 variant that this video is all about. And so I'd keep that in mind if you're thinking about one of these. It may be time to snag a 2024 Gen 4 version to get that drivetrain as the rest of the bike is nice features and upgrades but hardly changes the outcome of the riding style quite like the change in gearing. Now couple other things to talk about this Verve series. You do have an integrated mount for a speed and cadence sensor. It can drop into that spot and they call it a duo trap. Doesn't come stock with a bike but easy to add and it can connect to your phone that you could mount up on the handlebar. The tires are a 700 by 45 C tire so 45 millimeters wide, 700 C diameter nice and large. You do have an integrated kickstand mount. Bike doesn't come with one but you can add it. And this bike is set up to be able to run fenders as well as gives you a nice clean look with this integrated cable routing. So now that we've taken a look at the features and designs of this bike, it is time to find out what it weighs. And the actual weight of the Verve 2 in a size extra small comes in and weighs 29.4 pounds. Well, go ahead and let me know your thoughts about the Gen 4 version down in the comment section below. What do you think about this bike and is it worth hanging on to or is it worth waiting for the 2025 Gen 5 version? While you're at it, be sure to subscribe to the channel and browse to see other videos like this to check out as well.